In this video, you're going to learn how to work with absolute value equations as well as inequalities. And we're going to do some more challenging problems where you have absolute values on both sides of the equation, as well as special cases involving no solution or infinitely many solutions, and even ones that involve extraneous roots. So this is intended to be a deeper dive into solving problems involving absolute values. So we're going to go through nine examples. Let's dive in. The first example here, we just want to look at you know, these vertical bars. That represents uh, taking the absolute value. And the absolute value, you can think about that as the distance from zero on the number line. So you can say, hmm, negative four, how far is that from zero? Well, one, two, three, four to the left, that puts us at a distance of four units from zero. So this is four. Likewise, the absolute value of positive four that is also four units from zero, and so that answer is gonna be four. So you don't wanna make the mistake of saying, hmm, the absolute value is the opposite. That's not correct. The absolute value is saying, what's the distance from zero? And in this case, absolute value of negative four is four, the absolute value of positive four is four. Some students like to think about working from the inside, and then the final result is gonna yield a positive answer. But think about it as that distance from zero. Distance is always positive. Now for number two, a little bit more challenging problem here, we have this quantity inside the absolute value is equal to three, okay? Now there's a couple different ways to look at this. One way is to look at this minus sign and think of minus as the difference. And uh, in geometry, the difference is like the distance. So we're saying the distance between some number and five is three units. So the distance from some number in five, that could be over here at eight, that distance is three units from five, or it could be three units to the left of five, that would be here at two. So our solutions are gonna be x equals two or x equals eight. That's one way to do the problem. The other way to do the problem is to say, well, hmm, working backwards, whatever was in here originally could have been positive three because the absolute value of uh, positive three is gonna yield three, or whatever was inside of here originally could have been negative three, then when we take the absolute value, that's gonna yield a positive uh, distance of three. So x minus five is equal to negative three. So we're doing one positive, one negative. That distance could be three to the right or three to the left. If we solve these now, add five to both sides to get x by itself, we get x is equal to eight or x is equal to two. Now when we say or in math, or means union. It's like the combination of those two solutions. It's both, okay, together. So we've got x equals two, x equals eight. That's another way to approach the problem. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for number three we have the absolute value of two x plus one is equal to seven. Now notice in this problem, we don't have that minus sign like in the last problem where I was showing you the difference is like the distance, right? So in this case, we're gonna use the technique of saying, hmm, whatever was in here originally could have been positive seven. The absolute value would then give us seven. Or whatever was in here originally could have been negative seven. Then when we take the absolute value, that would also equal seven. Again, you can think about this being like the distance from zero is seven units. You could be uh, seven units to the right of zero, positive seven, or seven units to the left of zero, negative seven. And so let's go ahead and make two separate equations, one positive, one negative, and let's solve them individually. So let's subtract one from both sides. Let's divide both sides by two. This one, same thing, let's subtract one from both sides. Oops, sorry, negative eight. Divide both sides by two. And these are our two solutions. Now it's good to check your answer because when you're working with these absolute value problems, as you'll see a little further in the video, sometimes you get a false answer, what's called an extraneous root, like an extra root that's not really true. So if we put three back in, two times three is six plus one is seven. The absolute value of positive seven yields seven, so that's a good solution. Negative four, two times negative four is negative eight plus one is negative seven, and the absolute value of negative seven gives us positive seven. So these are both good solutions. Those would be your answers. Now for number four, we're transitioning here a little bit into the inequalities. You can see we have a less than and greater than. Remember, less than kind of looks like an L tilted, so you can kind of remember it that way. And again, we're gonna go back to that concept of distance. Remember, when you subtract, that's the difference, or you could think of it as the distance between some number and two, 
is less than four units. So four units to the right, that would put us here at six. Four units to the left, that would put us here at negative two. But we wanna be less than four units away, meaning we wanna be closer, uh, you know, less than four units from two. So closer to two than four units away, right? So you can see here what's happening is it's gonna be the values that are in between negative two and positive six. X is greater than negative two, so to the right of negative two, and at the same time, X is less than or to the left of six. Sometimes what students like to do when they're working with these problems is they like to think of less than as and. It almost sounds like and, doesn't it? When you think of less than, this is just a way of remembering less than. It almost kind of sounds like and, right? And and, again, is like this. We could say x is uh, greater than negative two and x is less than six. Now when it's an and, and means the intersection or the overlap. It's like you're less than six and you're greater than negative two. And means the intersection. It's what do they have in common? What's that overlapping region? And when it's an and uh, compound inequality, you can put these back together as like this, where x, the variable is in the middle. One thing you wanna be careful of though, you wanna write these with the less than signs. You want the smaller number here on the left, the larger number here on the right, and the variable in the middle. So x is greater than this number and less than this number. You don't wanna have it you know, the other direction or you don't wanna have something like this where the inequality signs are facing two different directions. You always want these to be less than uh, signs. So another way to approach this problem when it's a less than, some students uh, will do it this way, is they'll say, take the quantity that's in the absolute value, and we know that this distance is gonna be less than four and greater than negative four. Okay, so it's in between four and negative four. It's less than and it's greater than. And so what you do now is you would just add two to the left, middle, and right. It's kind of like solving uh, two inequalities at once. And so you can see you get negative two, x and six. So x is greater than negative two and less than six. Same thing we got here, analyzing it just uh, graphically or geometrically. Now, similarly, this problem almost looks exactly like this one, except for notice we have x minus two is greater than four. So again, if you think about subtraction as the distance, okay, some number, the distance from that number and two is greater than four units away. So if we went four units to the right, that would be six. We don't want it to be equal to four units away, we want it to be greater than four units away. Could also be four units to the left, meaning four units further to the left of that two. So here what you can see is we have like two separate uh, regions, two separate intervals, and you can say that this is x is less than negative two, or to the left of negative two, or, now remember in math, or means union or both, x is greater than, or to the right of six. You can't put these back together like we did with the, the and type. You have to just leave these as two separate inequalities. And that's your solution. Now, what some students use as a kind of a, a way of remembering is when they see this greater than, they think of great tor. See how it kind of sounds like or, great tor? Less than it kind of sounds like and. It's just a way of remembering. But what we're thinking about is this is like a distance Okay, and it's greater than four units. Okay, meaning it could be greater to the right or it could be further to the left, which means less than, right, negative four. So again, you can think about this as the distance from zero. And what you can do is, another way of doing this, if you just have an inequality like this, is to split it up. You could say x minus two is greater than four. Okay, so think about this as the distance from zero. Imagine if this was a number line, here's zero. You're greater than four units away. That's to the right, see, greater than four. Or it has to be to the left of negative four, meaning less than of negative four. So x minus two is less than negative four. And you can solve these uh, inequalities individually and you're gonna get the same final result. We're gonna look at some more examples. Let's take another example. Okay, if you're getting the hang of this, try number five and number six. So if I was gonna do number five, I notice we got this absolute value. It's less than or equal to eight. I can think of this quantity in the absolute value as like the distance from zero, and I wanna be less than eight units from zero. Now, if I think about this, like here's zero, here's eight, here's negative eight. So I wanna be less than eight units from 
that origin or that zero, I have to be closer to. I could also be equal to eight units away, so that would include both of these points. And I could kind of start with that in my mind, thinking that, hmm, okay, this is a less than. It's, a, it's gonna be it's less than or closer to. It's in between these two quantities. So the way I would set this up is I'd say one half x plus six has to be less than or equal to eight, okay? And this distance, this quantity has to be greater than or equal to, see, to the right of, negative eight. Okay, now we can solve it. We wanna get that variable by itself in the middle here. So it's working from the outside in towards x, I'm gonna subtract six from both sides, left, middle, and right. So that cancels, that gives us one half x is less than or equal to two, and it's greater than or equal to uh, negative 14. Let's multiply both sides by two to get x by itself. So we're gonna multiply everything times two, and that's gonna give us x is less than or equal to four, and x is greater than or equal to negative 28. So x is greater than or equal to negative 28 and less than or equal to four. That's gonna be our solution for the values of x that'll make this inequality true. So let's take a look at number six now. Number six, we have a greater than problem. So again, if we were to think about this as the distance from zero, if you're greater than three units from zero, that means you're further away, greater than, further away. So it means you could be less than negative three or greater than positive three. So I'm gonna take this quantity inside of the absolute value, greater than three or, remember greater, x, uh, 2x minus three is less than negative three. See, less than negative three. Solve these individually, let's get uh, the variable by itself on one side, so 2x is greater than 6, divide both sides by 2, so x has to be greater than 3, or, let's see, add 3 to both sides, 2x is less than 0, x has to be less than 0. So our answer is going to be x is greater than 3, or x is less than 0, and that's going to make this inequality true. Let's take a look at the next example. Okay, for number 7, we've got two problems here. We've got the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than negative 1, and the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than negative 1. Now, when you get the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation or inequality, you want to do that as your very first step. And then you want to ask yourself, if this number is a negative, this is going to be what we call a special case. So when we take the absolute value, this is always going to have to come out to a zero or a positive number. It can never take, come out to a negative number because when we take the absolute value, that distance from zero will always be positive, right? So when I look at this, I say to myself, hmm, this is always gonna be zero or positive. Is that greater than negative one? That will always be greater than negative one. It'll always be bigger than a negative number if this is zero or positive. So this one's gonna be infinitely many solutions or you could say all real numbers for x, uh, all real numbers or infinitely many solutions, something of that nature. Now, for this one, can this ever be less than a negative number? Well, if it's zero or positive, it can never be smaller than negative one. So this one would be no solution, or not possible, or the empty set, okay? So that's a special case. So first step is always to isolate or get that absolute value on one side of the inequality, okay? And then you can analyze, say, hmm, is this always true or never true? Okay, those are special cases if it's a negative. For number eight now, we've got the absolute value of x plus one is equal to two x. Now again, remember, whatever was inside of here originally could have been positive or negative. So kind of working backwards, uh, we can say to ourselves, hmm, well, x plus one could have equaled a positive quantity here. So we'll say positive two x, or uh, x plus one can equal the opposite of two x, okay? So now you see one positive, one negative, taking both scenarios into account. So if we solve this, let's subtract two x from both sides, or I could just subtract one x from both sides. Let's do that, so we get one equals x. Or over here, if we sub, uh, let's see, negative two x, let's uh, subtract x from both sides. That gives us one equals negative three x, divide both sides by negative three. Okay, so we get x equals negative one third. Now we wanna check our Answers, make sure that they're good solutions. So if I plug in one, one plus one is two. The absolute value of two is two. 
2 times 1 is 2. Okay, 2 equals 2. It matches. So this is a good answer. Now, negative 1 third, negative 1 third plus 1 is 2 thirds. The absolute value of 2 thirds is 2 thirds. Negative 1 third times 2 is negative 2 thirds. Does 2 thirds equal negative 2 thirds? No, it doesn't. So that means this is an extraneous solution. We're just going to cross that one out. In this case, we only have one answer. You could have two answers, one answer, no solution. You always want to just go back and check to make sure that it makes the equation true. Let's take a look at one last example. Now for number nine, this is kind of an interesting situation because we have an absolute value on both sides of the equation. How do we handle that? Well, we're going to dive into it, but before I do that, if you have been enjoying this video and you like the way that I explain things, check out my Algebra 1 and my Algebra 2 slash College Algebra video courses for sale. I'll put links in the description. I walk you through a typical Algebra 1 class as well as a typical Algebra 2 slash College Algebra class step by step, building on previous concepts to help you understand those courses. So many students have gone through them already. They found them very beneficial. I'm sure you will too. Let's go through this last example and then wrap up this video. So just like we were talking about earlier, it kind of working backwards. Whatever was in here originally could have been positive or negative. So we're trying to consider both of those cases. So we could write this as x plus 2 is equal to positive 2x minus 1. Or we could say x plus 2 is equal to the opposite of this quantity uh, 2x minus 1. Now notice how I'm putting it in parentheses and I'm taking the positive case and the negative case. Okay. Now you might be saying, Mario, couldn't I do it the other way? Couldn't I say, well, this 2x minus 1 is equal to positive x plus 2, and 2x minus 1 is equal to the opposite of x plus 2? Yeah, you can do either, either method. You could either start with the right side and say it's positive x plus 2 or negative x plus 2, or keep the left side and say positive this quantity or negative this quantity. You're going to get the same result. Matter of fact, you'll notice here if I multiply both sides by negative 1, that's going to yield this. If I multiply both sides by, well actually if I just flip this equation it's going to be the same as this one. So you're going to get the equivalent answer in the end. But usually what I do is I kind of work with a one side. You know, I keep it the same and I do the positive or negative for the other side. So let's go ahead and solve this. So if I was to subtract 2x from both sides, that gives me negative x. And if I subtract 2 from both sides, that gives me negative 3. And if I divide both sides by negative 1, x is equal to 3. Over here, if I distribute the negative, that's going to give us negative 2x plus 1. And if I add 2x to both sides, that gives us 3x. Subtract 2 from both sides, that gives us negative 1. Divide both sides by 3, x is equal to negative 1 third. Now, you always want to check your work, make sure that you don't have any extraneous solutions. So let's do that. If we plug in 3, we get 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5. 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1 is 5. Absolute value of 5 is 5, so that works. For negative 1 third, that gives us 6 thirds plus negative 1 third is 5 thirds. And negative 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is negative 5 thirds, but the absolute value of negative 5 thirds is positive 5 thirds. So these are both good solutions, and you got it. If you want more practice with absolute value problems, I'll put a video I did previously right there. Follow me over to that video, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.